the 2004 Rob Report Car of the Year 2004 Porsche 911 Turbo Cabriolet uh, in a manual transmission with the X50 Sport Package. We are looking at what I believe to be one of the unsung heroes in the Porsche 911 group of Porsche 911s. This was the car that was the first of the water-cooled flat six engines. Uh, this was also really the very beginning of Porsche's more modern production components into Porsches where they became physically just a lot easier to live with, with modern dashboards, uh, better interaction with the, the dashboards themselves, power tops, and in many ways, this is like the first mainstream cabriolet that Porsche really had since the late 1980s. The wheel of the six, the precision, the wind in the hair. For starters, looking at the 2004s, the 996s at the time that they came out were actually a very good striking Porsche 911. And then between the various iterations of Porsche 911s that have come out before and after, it is in that time zone that it was looking slightly dated for a great period of time and the vehicle or car is now becoming to look a little bit more exotic. And particularly in the car that we drove, uh, black on black leather cabriolet with the top down and in this case the car had non-factory wheels It actually is just a really really good-looking car again. In fact with the top down it, It's visually quite dynamic. It feels pretty sexy and then from the interior perspective Porsche started getting a lot more modern with the interior so that the way that the tachometer and the speedometer and the main presentation of information from the car to the driver started to become quite a bit more modern looking and in this case tasteful modern looking and then they moved all of the options and, and interaction with things like car stereo, air conditioning into a clean and very functional center console which also works very well. and so. Looking at this car both in and out, it is now becoming, you know, quite quite a good looking sassy car that one probably wants to be in more, at least in the right color combination than than nine nine sixes have felt in the in the last sort of seven or eight years, uh, when they were immediately behind the newer Porsche nine elevens that really migrated to the look that we currently have. Driving this car is the best part about it. So this was at a time that Porsche was moving from the full analog to more modern chassis and driveline equipment. So this vehicle is all-wheel drive. Uh, it has traction control. It's got you know Porsche's uh, PSM system, which was a stability management system. Uh, the roof is a power roof. Um, but it's still analog enough. It's a, you know, a lot of newer Porsches, you can't even really get the manual transmission anymore. And this car that we drove is, is fully manual. Okay, into the S. Down just a second for the tighter corner. Ooh, get some power on, on, more, more, more. Get some power on, more, more. All the way up in third, the Hercules gear. Oh, 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 and off she goes. Uh, the way that the engine performs in the Porsche's turbo delivery, even though at the time the turbo was considered to be, you know, all over the rev range, really the, the waterfall of torque and power on this car really starts to happen as you get over the 2500 RPM mark. Particularly in second and third gear, the car is really quite a performer and then again similar similarly the driving experience from a handling and and noise isolation and and the feeling overall um it's not quite as 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 friendly as a new porsche is this car still makes some loud noises 
uh, when you've really got things on the hustle. This, after just being in, you know, the other 87 911, is a combination of electronic and, you know, analog and digital. Whereas the other car had no modern technology on it on a really great extent. This thing has, you know, Porsche's traction control, handling system. It's got a full one down, one up, automatic roof. Uh, you really feel the car light up and there's still that relationship between the driver and the car that is quite linear and feels very mechanical, which is a very pleasurable thing that most people look for. And as a net result, driving this car with a little bit of aggression, you still get that real 911 interaction where you feel very involved with the car. But at the same time, because it's verging on the very modern Porsches, you also, when driving sedately, get a car that you can really drive in stop and go traffic, in and around downtowns or, 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 or cities where parking is an issue or navigating with a lot of other cars around, there's good visibility. This car straddles the old 911s and the new 911s now, you know, and when you look at it now from a modern sense, very well. It is really the beginning of the new Porsches uh, in terms of functionality and convenience, but still has a lot of the old sports car feel. It can still feel really exciting and you don't feel divorced from what's going on in the car. You can still really very much feel entertained and engaged that a lot of modern Porsches have difficulty really getting to that old school light car feeling that this car still provides. And, you know, I very much like the idea that with an all wheel drive, although this probably wouldn't be considered most people's first choice for a winter car, with winter tires on it, you can actually, because it's all wheel drive, get through most weather conditions without any difficulty whatsoever. So if one had to characterize the good of this car, you get most of the modern equipment that you get on a, a, on a, on a thoroughly brand new car today, but much of the old car driver interaction when you're really trying to engage with the car and have some fun. And the bad, there really isn't any. Uh, because this car is easily retrofitted back to uh, something that's got Bluetooth uh, interactivity and or rear parking cameras, this car is designed with the new interior that came with this Porsche to accommodate those sorts of things. And so from a drivability and performance perspective, this is really one of the best of all worlds. Still very fast, still really engaging, but enough of a nod to the new world that we live in that it can be a thoroughly modern daily driver in the summer top down and no one's gonna feel like they're having to compromise or be uncomfortable in any way whatsoever. Livability. So this car was the Porsche of Porsches in many senses, as most Porsche 911 turbos always are. They're not, in some cases, they're, they're not the most aggressive iteration of a 911, but they're usually amongst the very fastest. And at the time when this car went on the road, which I remember fondly, it was so quick that it almost felt dangerous. The binnacle, though familiar Porsche, they managed to get this binnacle all kind of within the steering wheel so you can see what's going on. But let's be honest, what this car is known for, when it's got in spades, is power. This car is not just quick. By today's standards, it's still super fast. Now, relative to some of the newer Porsches, it's not it's not as fast as a, as a brand new 911 Turbo, and nor should it really be compared against one, but it is still quick enough that um, you're not gonna have difficulty keeping up with traffic and or passing just about all traffic. In fact, when everything is working together in harmony, uh, it is still an incredibly quick car. So from a living perspective, it's got enough of the new world performance and new world uh, uh, amenities that you can really live with it. And um, because it was one of the most 
expensive and, and premier Porsches that Porsche built back in 2004, it is aged well. The, the, the car does not feel that it lacks for any option that you'd find on a modern day car. I wouldn't say that the fuel economy is particularly good, but it's not particularly bad either, as you see in some of the much older Corvettes or even marginally old Corvettes or Vipers or things of that nature. And so, all in all, this is a, a car that's not only easy to live with, but from a servicing and managing perspective, there's also a dividend here. Because most of the cars using a combination of old world engineering with newer technology interfaced or, or overlaid that old world technology, it is quite reliable. And in terms of getting things serviced or figuring out where there are problems, there is more diagnosis involved in understanding certain aspects of what could or could not go wrong with this car. But overall, these cars are actually still fairly serviceable and access to parts and the cost of those parts relative to Porsche, Ferrari, or particularly the newer ones, is still relatively reasonable. And so the combination of the two in terms of being able to keep it serviced and functioning properly, as well as the fact that it's got functioning air conditioning, keyless remote, power tops, makes this car really from a, a, a livability perspective, something that um, it's not quite as compromised as getting a very old classic vehicle as a, as a backdrop to living with this car. So getting one of these cars and what these cars costs is um, a little bit of a, a, a departure from getting a brand new car or even a recently built car because you're not going to be finding a large inventory of these vehicles sitting with Porsche dealerships or with uh, more mainstream used vehicle dealerships and to find the very best iterations of this particular car is probably going to require doing some diligence and some finding. Which is to say, this 911 Turbo that we drove and thoroughly enjoyed had the X50 Sport package, which brought all sorts of enhancements to the car that most people in Porsche world really kind of wanted. It made the car significantly quicker. And so you've got to identify between 911 turbos of this vintage, which cars had the X50 Sport package on it and which didn't. You need to have access to books and records. These cars, or Porsches in general, and a lot of vehicles that are engineered to the, the more zenith of automotive world. So in 2004, this car would be amongst the premier performance cars that was available. When people don't do proper, proper maintenance and service on these cars, uh, there is a knock on effect to other components of the car that can make large and difficult to do servicing and repairs in the future um, uh, a potential problem area. In other words, it is a must have to get one of these Porsches with a history that you can see what's gone on and how up to date it is, as distinct from buying one inexpensively and then playing catch up and whack-a-mole with all sorts of problems, and some of them can be expensive problems, that could manifest because the car wasn't managed properly to begin with. And so speaking about pricing, if I was tasked to go and find a car of a like or a Porsche or a 911 turbo convertible of a like level to the one that's here, so we're driving something that's got 40,000 kilometers on it, it's effectively really one owner, was owned briefly before the current owner, which has been for many years, uh, and all the service is fully up to date, everything's functioning properly. If I were tasked to go and find something like that, you'd probably be looking at an acquisition cost on a pre-tax basis in the 80s, 80,000 Canadian, 85,000 Canadian. And I wouldn't say that's a screaming deal relative to some other cars. Now, obviously there's a lot of Toyotas that are much cheaper, but for what it is, it's actually very well priced. And these prices that these cars are sitting at, 
uh, is still quite reasonable. So unlike some 911s that have really appreciated uh, in recent history, a lot of sought after cars have shown really good appreciation. This particular 911 has still really not done much in terms of future value. In other words, as the market transitions to recognizing this car for the thoroughbred that it is, there's a good probability that there's room for the, the value of this car to move up quite substantially. Whereas some of the other 911s, their prices have, have most of the movement or a great deal of the movement of their prices has probably already taken place. 996 Turbo Cabriolet specked out and in the shape that this 996 was that we engaged at warp speed on several different occasions. This is a car that's worth getting. This is uh, an overlooked vehicle in the world of Porsches at the moment. In the right color combination with the right equipment, this is a wonderfully fun place to be. It is not a difficult car to live with. There's very little compromise required to be in a, a, a 996, as distinct from older 911s. It's still got a lot of guts, and it's still analog and engaging like 911s really should be. And so this is a car that if you're thinking about Porsches or thinking about something fun in the garage, it's easy to get behind. It's easy to recommend because as, as you can see, it's, it's now starting to look exotic. It certainly feels exotic. It sounds great. It's got those two extra seats if you really need it in a pinch. And when the top down or the top is down, you feel pretty good about yourself.